our video today is going to be using what we know about graph analysis and being able to sketch graphs given certain information. All right, let's go ahead and jump in with our first graph. Sketch a graph of a polynomial function f having these characteristics. All right, so we've got f is increasing when x is less than 0 and x is greater than 4. We're going to read through everything first and then we'll go ahead and start putting this stuff on the graph. Then we know it's decreasing between 0 and 4. f of x is greater than 0. Okay, so let's think about this. f of x is greater than 0. Remember, this is y. That means my graph is above the x-axis. Above x, well, I'm going to get in the way of my graph here above the x-axis. And when we say that y is below 0, that means that this is when my graph is below the x-axis. Use the graph to describe the degree and the leading coefficient. So this brings us back to that first day of defining a polynomial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this graph and then I'm going to explain how it all kind of goes together. That's a really bad graph, but we're going to stick with it. Okay, so first thing we have is that f is increasing when x is less than 0. x, here's where x is 0, so we're going to pretend like I had a better graph here. Well, I'm just going to fix it. And at 0, Anytime it's less than zero, so on the left-hand side of this, my line is increasing. It's also going to increase when x is four. So that tells me that this point right here is four, because at four, my graph is going to switch directions, and it's going to start increasing. It's decreasing between 0 and 4, and that's good. I can see that. Here's 0, here's 4, so this is where my graph is decreasing between the x values of 0 and 4. Now the next part, remember that this right here is the graph is above the x-axis. So that's when f of x is greater than 0. So it says that it's going to be above the x-axis at a negative 2 to a positive 3. So that means that this right here is a negative 2 because this is the point where my graph is above the x-axis. And it's staying above the x-axis between a negative 2 and a positive 3. So that means that that point's going to be 3. It's also above the x-axis every time it's less greater than 5. So that means that this is going to be 5. Because as soon as it hits 5, now I'm above. And then the bottom half, the graph is below the x-axis. So that means that f of x is less than 0. And we want it to be less than 0 when x, remember, just think about x's, our x is less than 2, which is true. See, anytime that my x is less than 2, it's below the graph. And it's below the graph here between positive 3 and a positive 5. So now that we have a sketch of our graph, we can use this information to answer the question. Use the graph to describe the degree. So in this case, we have, as x goes to the left, look at our end behavior, f of x goes down. As x goes to the right, f of x is going up. Because my end behavior is going in different directions, I know that my degree is odd. 
because when I go left it goes down and when I goes right it goes up, that tells me that I have a positive leading coefficient. That brings us back to our end behavior chart that we did. So from this graph I can say that it's an odd degree with a positive leading coefficient based on that end behavior. All right, we got a couple more graphs to sketch here. Don't worry, these are easier. All right, so I'm gonna give you specific information and then you have to graph it. Now I want you to note that there are gonna be multiple correct answers. There's not just one, most of the time there's not just one correct answer. So we start with what we're given. The local min at four, x is four. So I find where x is four. Now it just tells me that I have a minimum value when x is four. It doesn't tell me what that minimum value is. So I can pick any minimum value I want. I'm gonna pick down here at negative six, why not? So I just know that when I come down, I have to swoop down here at four. And I'm gonna have a maximum value at zero. So here's x is zero. I'm gonna pick zero, three, why not? Does it matter? And then it tells me that I have an x-intercept at negative two, zero, so that's an exact point, two, zero, and six, zero. So I have to use these points. When I draw my graph and I start doing my loop-de-loops here, I have to make sure that when I do my loop, the minimum value is at four, so I'm coming down to four. My maximum is at zero. So when I sketch this graph and I connect those points that I chose, you can see that this is my max, this is my min, and I could have chosen any max or min as long as it had an x value of four and an x value of zero. Done. Our next one, we have a third degree polynomial. That means it's odd with a negative leading coefficient. That means when I go left, I go up. When I go right, I go down. So an odd degree with a negative coefficient is gonna give me that kind of end behavior. One real root and two imaginary. So when I draw this graph, I can only have one x-intercept, even though it's a third degree polynomial. When I go left, my arrow has to end up to get that negative coefficient. So I'm going to do that. As I go left, my arrow goes up. As I go right, my arrow goes down. So I've hit that negative coefficient. It is a degree because they're going in different directions. I have my one real root and that means I have two imaginary roots left over. So the key was I made this little hump here above or you need to make it below the x, inter, x, x axis so that you only have that one real solution. All right, see that wasn't that bad. That is it for today.